peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning and welcome today as we celebrate the day of Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. And we also have even song at six o'clock this evening if you'd like to join us. These are all the old orders of service from pre-post-COVID, just post-COVID. So the peace is next. It's back at the beginning. <laughs> but the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We share God's peace with a wave, a smile, or a bow. Peace be with you. <laughs> Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love, and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loves us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we confess to you 
and to our fellow members in the body of Christ, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins, and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son, who died for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by the Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered, and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these are speaking Galileans, and how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and the Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, and of all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. 
Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is two Corinthians. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts for the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services for the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit, the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. 
Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Give thanks to the Lord for this glorious gospel. May the words of my mouth and the reflections of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, my Lord and my Redeemer. Amen. I love watching television programmes where surprising but lovely things happen to people. Michael McIntyre has a slot on his Saturday night big show, which I suspect you're all familiar with, um, where people find themselves unexpectedly, for example, on stage, singing with their favourite star, or playing football in front of a Wembley crowd and fulfilling a dream. Whatever happens to them, they've come to an event expecting one thing, and experience something completely different. They were not expecting it, and it's amazing and often very moving to watch their reactions. I wonder what the disciples were expecting as they followed Jesus' command to wait in Jerusalem to receive the full power of the Holy Spirit that would enable them to be, as Jesus said, witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Whatever they were expecting, I suspect it was not strong winds, fire, and the ability to speak in languages that were not their own. The image of wind and fire is found in the Old Testament in relation to the Holy Spirit moving and to God's presence. But I cannot imagine that anyone in those moments was pointing that out. There was too much going on. The events that occur in the Book of Acts are difficult to get our heads round, and whole forests of paper have been used by people trying to explain what was happening, or trying to explain why what happened didn't really happen. That is the nature of theology sometimes. One less visually or audibly dramatic thing to notice, however, is the change that happens to Peter. As the crowd accuses everyone of being drunk, it's only nine in the morning, it is Peter's voice that we hear speaking above the crowd. Peter, the disciple renowned for not quite making the mark, opening his mouth and putting his foot in it, walking on water and then sinking, trying to stop Jesus going to Jerusalem and denying Jesus when they get there. Peter, the disciple whose relationship with Jesus is restored after the resurrection over a breakfast of cooked fish. Peter, the uneducated fisherman who suddenly takes on a leadership position and then even more dramatically becomes a preacher. In the next chapter of Acts, he will heal a crippled beggar. What has happened to him? It seems that what Jesus had promised has happened to him. He has received the power, the dunamis of God, through the Holy Spirit, and he is changed. He's still Peter, but there is something now at work in him that enables him to be God's mouthpiece to the crowd. I suspect he wasn't expecting that. What do we expect of the Holy Spirit this morning? more than 2,000 years later. The word that is most frequently used for the Holy Spirit in the Greek is pneumatos, which means wind or breath. The same word as ruach in the Hebrew in the Old Testament. There's another word which is used by Jesus and in 1 John for the Holy Spirit, parakletos. This is the word used by Jesus in John 14. I will ask the Father and he will give you another parakletos, advocate, to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. There's two things to notice about that verse. Firstly, that Jesus says, another. 
Jesus, it seems, is the first paraclete. The Holy Spirit will be another. Translation of the word paraclete is wrought with challenges. Not least because there just isn't an English word, according to William Barclay, that really translates it. The NRSV uses advocate, the NIV uses counsellor, the King James uses comforter, and the RV has an alternative option of helper. According to Barclay, parakletos means the one who is called in. But the one who is called in is called in with a purpose. This is no passive engagement. At its most minimal, a parakletos is someone who is called in to help with a situation with which a person cannot cope. To Barclay, following detailed discussions of the use of the word in Greek literature as well as scripture, the Holy Spirit makes people able to cope with life. He suggests that the Holy Spirit is the fulfilment of the promise in Matthew, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. What does that feel like? When I took on a more senior role at the university in 2016, taking on a department that I had always said I would not touch with a barge pole, um, there were many challenging areas. I had to step up in leadership and in handling some very difficult meetings and very difficult conversations. As a conflict-averse person, this was not easy. The thing I remember at the time is a remarkable sense of containment. I felt very held. It doesn't mean I was never stressed. There were still a few sleepless nights, and a lot of mentoring was also involved. But when I look back, I was astonished by how far we had come. And it wasn't me that had done that. The presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives is sometimes dramatic. Where the energy of God is involved, things are not always going to be quiet. Prophecy, speaking in tongues and healing still happens. But in my experience, and much more undervalued often, is the presence of the Spirit in our lives to help us cope with the demands that life puts upon us. How do we receive that Spirit? Well, lots of ways. Foremost is in the taking of communion, as we take the presence of Jesus into our very beings. Jesus talks about how God, as a good Father, will give the Spirit to those who ask. So another way is that we just pray for more of the Holy Spirit in our lives, something I was very conscious of doing when I was at the university. In fact, when I was there, a friend of mine from St Mungo's, whose husband was also one of the directors, we used to walk around the various buildings with a master list of problems from both departments and just pray for these different situations. I sometimes wonder if we underestimated the power of those prayers. Another way we can do it is to ask someone else to pray that for us. And you'll remember that a few weeks ago, we talked about beginning to offer healing prayer once a month or thereabouts um, during our morning services. And we said we would start on Pentecost and we are going to start on Pentecost. And what we're going to do is we're going to offer prayer as you come up for communion. If you would like prayer, then there will be two of us. And on this occasion, it will be me and Jean. And the reason it's Jean is not because Jean is super special, but because Jean made the mistake of saying, that sounds like a really good idea as she walked past me at the door. So Jean and I on this occasion will be available with a short, a very short written prayer that we will pray for anybody who'd like to come and receive that prayer and then go back to their seat. And there are three things you could come forward for, well, there's lots of things, but let's say three specific. You could come forward because you would like some form of healing for yourself. You could come forward because you would like some sort of healing for someone else. Or you could just come forward because you would like someone to pray for more of the Holy Spirit in your life. And we will do that very simply with a short prayer. We never know what might happen. In another version of the Gospel of these events, on the last day, the scripture says, at the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted at the crowds, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of living water 
will flow from his heart. And that's a translation because what it actually says is will flow from his belly, from his inner being, will flow these living waters. And when he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. We pray that may be true for all of us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Please stand as you're able, as we affirm our faith. <laughs> we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. After each section of these prayers, there will be a period of silence golden silence. Perhaps we may use this time to wait on God and to pray for whatever the Holy Spirit brings to our mind. Listen carefully for the prompting of prayer, the nudge of the Spirit. Holy Spirit, come as fire and burn away the transgressions that cling to our church. Come as fire and burn away the conflicts that divide and depress us. Come as fire and burn away our pettiness, our insularity, our small gospel. Come as fire. Holy Spirit, come as the wind and blow away the bureaucracy that tries to put you into a neat box. Come as the wind and disturb our best laid plans which left you out. Come as the storm and rage through our hypocrisy and cowardice till all is clean. Come as the wind. Holy Spirit. Come as flood tide and water the dry ground, 
that we call our spirituality. Come as flood tide and sweep away our land shackled defences against your love. Come as flood tide and fill every nook and cranny of our lives. Come as flood tide. Holy Spirit, come as life giver and put again to us that basic choice, life or death, blessing or curse. Come as life giver and build our confidence that the last word in a resurrection faith is always life. Come as life giver and touch our jaded faith with the miracle of Christ. Come as life giver. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us, break us, melt us, mold us, fill us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. May our prayers be worthy to stand in the pure light of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become the cup of our salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit you call us and we birth in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. <laughs> your will he died upon the cross by your power you raised him from the dead he broke the bonds of evil and set your people free to be his body in the world on the night when he was given up to death knowing that his hour had come having loved his own he loved them to the end at supper with his disciples he took bread and offered you thanks he broke the bread and gave it to them saying take Eat. This is my body, it is broken for you. After supper he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled to the fire of your love and renewed to the service of your kingdom. Help us to have our ties into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love, until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Apostles and Prophets, St. Cuthbert, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, 
Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this time. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
thanks to our gracious God, whose mercy endures forever. Father, your steadfast purpose is the completion of all things in your Son. May we who have received the pledges of the kingdom live by faith, walk in hope, and be renewed in love, until the world reflects your glory and you are all in all. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and to proclaim the word and works of God, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.